Hello friends, let us start with the AIMS question discussion series and today the series number 4. First question, which of the following is a new drug available for multi drug resistant tuberculosis? The answer is A bidaquiline. Now, before I discuss, let us learn the meaning of what is the meaning of multi drug resistant tuberculosis. If, if TB is resistant to INH and rifampicin, then we call it to be uh, drug resistant tuberculosis. But we have extra term that if what is extended multi drug resistant tuberculosis, okay, XDTR. In this, in addition to these two drug, patient is also resistant to quinolones. Also, in any of the injectable amikacin, capromycin or canamycin. That means, we need another two drug resistant in so called extended multi drug resistant tuberculosis. Now, the bidaquiline is a new drug specifically has been designed or which has been discovered which is a very effective again multi drug resistant tuberculosis. Now, let us see what are the other newer drugs for tuberculosis. The other newer drug for tuberculosis are linezolid, amoxy, clavulinic acid, clarithromycin, okay. Uh, well, one thing is there. If you notice these drugs, these drugs are, although they are supposed to be newer tuberculosis uh, treatment, but we know very well these are the drugs that we are using for the treatment of staphylococcus infection also. And perhaps some of the students do not know that rifampicin is a very good anti staphylococcal agent also. So, what we are finding there is some similarity in the treatment of tuberculosis as well as staphylococcus infection is there. Okay. So, this is about the question number 1. Bidaquiline is a such an important topic. This question you will surely get in the coming aims or any other exam to in 2018. So, you should know more about bidaquiline. The, the two important side effects of this drug are first of all it leads to body pain, headache, but what is the uh, which is really a matter of concern it leads to prolonged QT interval. Okay. It leads to uh, prolonged QT interval that means it can be it can lead to any of the arrhythmias that is the one thing it is a warning about this drug. Question number 2, we have a 65 year old male presented with chronic sinusitis, nasopharyngeal ulcer, cavity in the lungs and renal failure. What is the most appropriate next step? So, before this let us learn what the patient is suffering from. This patient is suffering from upper respiratory tract infection suggested by sinusitis, lower respiratory tract in infections suggested by cavity cavitative lesion in the lung and he has also renal failure. So, kidney involvement is there. So, this patient has got triad of upper respiratory tract, low respiratory tract and renal involvement. This we typically see in vaginous granulomatosis, which is a small vessel vasculitis. Now, as far as kidney failure is concerned, it typically lead to crescentic type of glomerulonephritis. And due to cavitated lesion, patient may even have hemoptysis. 
that is why it mimics like tuberculosis also ok. And of course, the extra feature which, uh, which the question came last year also that in this vaginus typically you get strawberry gingiva ok. So, strawberry gingiva is a classical feature that we see in this patient and for a for a patient to diagnose the best initial test is C and K antibodies ok. But most confirmative test is biopsy lung biopsy. So, that is why the answer of this question is C, but if he is talking about next diagnostic step, but if the question was which is the most accurate test then answer should have been lung biopsy. Okay. Now, what about sputum with AFB? Well, patient in the TB, there is cavity, cavitated lesion is there, but in, in case of TB, usually renal involvement is not a feature and sinusitis is usually not a feature. So, the best answer of this question is uh, C, ENCA, an evaluation for vasculitis, which is small vessel vasculitis. Now, extra edge question in this condition we see C and K antibodies. Now, what are the condition where we see P and K antibodies? P and K antibody are seen in microscopic polyangiitis. We also see in Chuck Strauss disease. We also seen in good pasture syndrome. Okay they are the few and of course, P and K antibody can occur in inflammatory bubble disease like ulcerative colitis. Okay. So, this is about question number 2. Question number 3, which of these is a new oral drug used in the treatment of hepatitis C? The answer is Lady Pasvir. Now, before I discuss this, let us learn more about hepatitis C. Friends, hepatitis C is the most important topic in hepatology in today's era. In all the forthcoming exam, you will surely getting a question for hepatitis C, okay. maybe in the clinical feature, but treatment is the what is the most important. So, same question will be or nearby question will be coming to you in almost neat AIMS PGI. So, I am leaking the paper to you, but in a very off, very honest way. Okay. So, let us talk about, let us know something more about hepatitis C. We know it is one condition which is the RNA virus, but why it is so important? It is the one which is the commonest cause of chronicity in, la, in liver diseases. In fact, it is the commonest cause of hepatic transplantation in the world. What are the extra point? Jaundice is mild, it is not very severe. Remember, jaundice is very severe in hepatitis E. Next, there is episodic rise of SGOT, SGPT. And these patients have associated cryoglobinemia porphyria cutana tarda lichen planus membranous glomerulonephritis membrano prolif Operative glomerulonephritis type 1. These are the common associate of these patient. Now, traditionally we have been treating with ribavirin and interferon alpha, but recently new drugs have been introduced and out of these sophosbuvir. So, force buvir 
and Lady Pasveer. These are the two most commonly used drug. The other drug is Dekle. Declitavir also is used. Okay. So now, if you look into option, interferon alpha, it is a yes. We use this drug for hepatitis C, but it's not a new drug. It's an old drug. As far as Ostella Mivir is concerned, this we use for swine flu, not for hepatitis C. Lemuvudine we use for hepatitis B, not for hepatitis C. The best answer to this question is uh, Lady Path B is the best answer. Let us talk about question number 4. In a patient of jaundice, absence of bilirubin, urobilinogen in the urine indicate obstructive jaundice. So, let us see what are the findings that we get in different type of jaundice rather how to approach a case of jaundice. So, if we classify jaundice into three categories, one is prehepatic, prehepatic, this typically occurs due to any cause of hemolytic anemia. Second is hepatic cause, this typically occurs in hepatitis. Then we have post hepatic, post hepatic which typically occurs due to gallstone and carcinoma head of pancreas. Now, let us see what are the finding we get in these patients. Bilirubin, B for bilirubin, it is unconjugated in prehepatic. In hepatic, it is both that means conjugate and unconjugate, but in post hepatic, it is mainly conjugated bilirubin. Then we talk about enzyme SGOT, SGPT. This is normal in case of prehepatic. It is highly increased in hepatic, normal or may be slightly increased in post hepatic. Alkaline phosphatase normal increase highly increase. Point to be noted that alkaline phosphatase is highly increase in obstructive type of jaundice. Now, bilirubin in the urine, bilirubin urea, it is it is not there, no. Why? because unconjugated bilirubin is attached to albumin, so it is not filtered in the urine. But in hepatic and post hepatic where we have both, in hepatic we have both type, we have a conjugated bilirubin, so it will be there present in the urine and in obstructive also the urine will contain bilirubin. Now, what about urobilinogen? it will be there in urine, it will be there in urine and in complete obstruction, urobilinogen will not be there. Okay. Hence, the, if you talk about obstructive jaundice is the best answer of this question. In liver failure, we have both types, so called hepatic type, we have both type of bilirubin. Hemolysis is nothing but a type of prehepatic uh, jaundice, it will be there and hepatitis is again a type of hepatitis, uh, hepatic type of jaundice. Hence, the best answer of this shall be A is the best answer. Most specific sign of hepatic encephalopathy, it is asterixis. Asterixis is typically we ask the patient to do like this and he has, remember in this the wrist should be extended and this is the so called flapping tremor is the most important sign for a, any uh, encephalopathy. Of course, when we talk about metabolic encephalopathy that means either we talk about hepatic failure, renal failure or maybe uh, respiratory failure also. But in as far as this sign 
we typically try to elicit in hepatic encephalopathy. What about a kinetic mutism? This is seen in frontal lobe disease. Okay. Then apraxia, this is seen in parietal lobe lesion. What do you mean by apraxia? The patient forgets the learned motor activity. Like some there is one patient who knows how to drive a cycle, but he forgets. And classically, what we have one more entity so called dressing apraxia. Dressing apraxia is classically seen in non dominant parietal lobe lesion, okay. non dominant. parietal lobe region. What do you mean by dressing apraxia? Like suppose we have to wear a shirt, we wear like this and we have to wear a pant, we wear from the legs. But here patient forget, he does not know how to dress up. He will wear pant like this and shirt from the legs. So, dressing apraxia is classically seen in frontal lobe uh, in non-dominant parietal lobe region. And as far as abulia is concerned, this is seen more in schizophrenia type of patient where patient does, does not have any initiative to do any work. So, estrexis is the best answer in this case and the other important feature that we see in uh, N in typically in hepatic encephalopathy to be more precise which is again a type of metabolic encephalopathy. Handwriting become macrographia. And that can become bigger and bigger. An altered sleep cycle is there. Patients tend to sleep on the daytime and tend to remain awake at night. This is what we see in hepatic encephalopathy, and of course, in the later stage, in uh, in any type, little car, little advanced stage, patient may have nominal aphasia. That is, patient forget the names. But of course, in the final stage of any type of metabolic encephalopathy, patient has altered sensorium. Okay. The answer of question number 5 is A is the answer. Well, friends, I have got recorded many lectures on various topic of medicine, which you can see at our YouTube channel written in front of you. And we have books with containing lot of last minute revision points and I am very happy to say in the 2018 NEET exam 143 question came after 300 question from our LMRP. Okay. In addition, you can very well get connected to me on my personal WhatsApp number, I will be sending you lots of updates. Okay. And once I finish the AIM series, then I will be doing PGI and JIPMA series also. So, stay tuned to my series. Thank you very much. And I have got two things for you. One is mini Harrison, summary of Harrison. And we have a question bank, Medicine Essence, based again on 19th edition of Harrison. Okay. So, these books you can get in Amazon Flipkart. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much.